So one of the things that I'm trying to add into the starter kit I've been trying to work on is the ability to upload files and images out of the box. So in this case, I have a group created. If I go to my settings as an admin user, I can come in here and I can upload a brand new image if I want to. I'll just go ahead and take a screenshot. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just paste this in, click upload, and you'll see that after some time, that image will get updated. And it displays here, it also displays here, and then it'll display on my groups page at when I go to it over here. So I did want to walk you through how I got this set up. Um, so let's just go ahead and get over to my upload form. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can have more real estate to talk about the code. So here is the settings page. If I go here, we just have a page that has a banner upload form, which is basically what you're seeing here. Okay. And so if I look into that code, this is just using a normal form with a couple of things to keep track of when the form is loading or not. I might come through here and refactor this in a little bit to make it consistent with some other forms in the application. But overall, the way this works is a user selects an input file right here. So I just have an input type file. So the important part is when I submit this form, all I'm doing is getting the form data. So basically I'm doing some like some checks here. So basically I grab the current target of the submit and I just wrap it in a form data. And then I use that to post it to one of my backend endpoints. Now again, I'm not sure why I'm not using a server action. I do think files can be sent on server actions, although I think it might be experimental. So that's probably why I avoid it. I'm trying to avoid too many experimental things on a starter kit. So let's go to the actual endpoint. So I do have an API groups images route. So if you load this one up, Pretty straightforward. All it does is it grabs the request form data, it gets the file from that request, and then I, you know, do some checks to make sure the file is defined. If it's not, I throw an error. But when it is defined, I call a use case, which does a couple things. First of all, it checks to make sure that it is a type of image. So make sure that the, the meme type is starting with image slash. I also check to make sure that the size of the file is not greater than a certain max size. I think right here I have it set to five megabytes for images. That might even be too high. But I do do some checks to make sure that, that it's not too big. I also check to make sure that, hey, are you an admin or an owner of this group? Because you don't want anyone who's just a member to be able to change the group image. So I have some authorization checks here. So then if everything is good, I go ahead and create a UID and I update the group information to have that new banner ID, right? So like if I were to go to my schema, I have a group and over here I keep track of the banner image. So the banner ID is just a UID and that's used to point to a R2 bucket to know where the file is. Okay. I am using R2. You could also use S3 if you want to, which leads us to the next step, which is upload file to bucket. So what this is doing is it's actually using a S3 client library to connect to an R2 Cloudflare bucket. So over here you see it just does a new upload and then I pass in the S3 client. I pass some parameters such as, you know, passing the stream to the file and then also the meme type. And that uploads the file to the R2 bucket. And then when that's done uploading, it basically just returns back to the user and the form will show a toast saying image was updated. I reset the form. Yeah, I don't know why I'm doing this file ref stuff. I think um, I think I don't need that anymore. Go ahead and remove that file ref. There we go. That can go away too. I love cleaning up code. And if there's any errors uploading this, I just go ahead and show a toast so that the user knows that, hey, like something went wrong. And then I stop showing the loader in the button. And then I just do a router refresh. This is important. The router refresh is a client side refresh. And that is going to tell the current route that I'm on we basically reload the group data because again, we updated that banner ID. And so we have to refetch it, which is going to tell React to kind of recompute these components. And then that's when you see this update. And then also here you see this update. Okay, I did some changes. Let me make sure I didn't break anything because uh, it's very easy to break stuff when you make little changes like that. Okay, cool. Everything's good. So that is how that kind of works. Again, this code isn't public. It's part of a starter kit that I'm working on. So if you want a collection of code that is ready to go out of the box to build your SaaS application, this will be part of it um, for file uploads. And I'm going to walk you through how to set up an R2 bucket, how to set up the course permissions properly, how to set up your API keys, 
so that when you create your own SaaS application, you can go ahead and like upload things to your application like I showed you. All right, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Leave a comment below if you think there's a better way I could have kind of structured my code because I'm still trying to play around with some stuff, trying to make sure I have everything structured the way I think is best and easy and intuitive. But call me out in the comments if you think there's a better way to do this. Other than that, yeah, have a good day and happy coding.